Jesus' name we pray. Pray for all other people that the Lord has appointed to be used during this service this morning, that there will be anointing upon them. I said there will be anointing of the Holy Spirit. There will be free cause in the outrances, and that as they come up, whether by means of choir ministration, search the scripture teaching, or the summary and question and answer, ask the Lord that the Lord will make use of them. Pray and talk to the Lord. Ask the Lord that it will be a glorious meeting that you will live to remember this very day that we have come together. And in all our districts, locations, even those who are not here today, even right there too today, the Lord will speak and bless them. In Jesus' name we pray. You will now particularly pray for yourself. Why are you here this morning? You will talk to the Lord. And you know, God still answers prayer. And he will answer your prayer. You will tell the Lord, as I come here this morning, Lord, anoint my eyes with spiritual salve that I will see. Make my path, make my step clearer, brighter through this combined service. And all my anxiety, perhaps, all the outstanding blessing that you are looking up unto God, tell the Lord, these coming together this morning will be a time of fulfillment of that very expectation in your heart and in my heart. Tell the Lord at this time that every aspect of the service will be a blessing to you. Pray that there will be no distraction. You will be able to focus and to concentrate on the things of God. Talk to the Lord in prayer and ask him that he will speak to you and that you will regard, you will respect, you will receive the word. with reference, with understanding. In Jesus' name we pray. Our Father, we thank you this morning for this very great privilege we have had to come together. And we pray as we begin the service now, we pray you will begin with us. Thank you, Lord, because we know you've answered. In Jesus' name we pray. We remain standing as we want to sing from our gospel hymn and song, number 103. Gospel hymn and song, number 103. He healed them all. The blind, the lame, the palsy, the sick in the body and the weak in mind, whoever came, no matter how afflicted, was sure a sovereign remedy to find. His work gave earth, his touch restored the vigor to every weary, pain exhausted frame. And all he asked before he gave the blessing was simple faith in him from those who came. And is our Lord the kind, the good, the tender, less loving now than in the, those days of old? Or is it that our faith is growing feeble and Christian energy is waxing cold? Why do we not with equal expectation now bring our sick ones to the Lord in prayer, right through the throng of unbelieving scruples, up to his very side and leave them there. He never had refused in bygone ages, nor fear to take the chastisement away. Then why not ask it now instead of praying for patience to endure from day to day?
Praise the Lord. Shall we pray together? Our Father, we thank you so much for bringing us together to worship at your feet this morning. As we look at the scripture, we are asking that through your spirit, you will speak to every one of us in Jesus' name. And the grace to put into practice what you are teaching us, bestow on us all in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, for the answer. For in Jesus' holy and mighty name, we have prayed. Praise the Lord. This morning, we are looking at a study titled, Christ's Testimony of John the Baptist. Our text will be taken from the book of Matthew chapter 11, from verse 1 to verse 30, Luke chapter 7, from verse 18 to verse 35. I will request the first reader to volunteer to come forward and read our text for, for, for us. And before then, we also ask for a volunteer to recite our memory verse, which is on Matthew chapter 11, verse 11. Any volunteer, please? Your sister from the Korea, please help us. Thank you. Verily I say unto you, among them that are born of women, there are no reason a greater than John the Baptist, notwithstanding, he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Matthew chapter 11, verse 11. Thank you so much. Do we have a volunteer to take our text now? Anybody from the Kurdistan? Matthew chapter 11. Please, you, you read verse 1 to verse 16, and then we take other verses as we progress. Thank you. And it came to pass when Jesus had made an end of commanding his 12 disciples, he departed thence to teach and to preach in their cities. Now when John had heard in the prison the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples and said unto him, Are thou he that shall come, or do we look for another? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Go and show John again those things which ye do, and which ye, which ye do hear and see. The blind receive their sight, and the lame walk. The lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up, and the poor have, have the gospel preached to them. And blessed is he, whosoever shall not be offended in me. And as they departed, Jesus began to say unto the multitudes concerning John, What went ye out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaking with the world, with the wind? But what, but what went ye out of, out for to see? A man clothed in soft raiment? Behold, they that wear soft clothing are in the king's houses. But what, we, but what went ye out for to see? A prophet? Yea, I say unto you, and more than a prophet. For this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. Verily I say unto you, Among them that are born of women, there had not risen a greater than John the Baptist, notwithstanding he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence, and the violent take it by force. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John, and if ye will receive it, this is Elijah, which was for to come. He that had ears in to hear, let him hear. Thank you, thank you. The ministry of um, John the Baptist presents a very rich lesson to all believers. John started his ministerial life at a time when there was so much spiritual dullness in the nation of Israel. He began to speak to them about the kingdom that is to come and the necessity of repentance so that their sins can be remitted. In John chapter 1, verse 15, we see him saying, John bear witness of him and cried saying, This was he of whom I speak. He that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. Verse 16, and of his fullness have all we received and grace for grace. In verse 29 of John chapter 1, the next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him 
and saith, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the whole world. John had a ministry, and his ministry was majorly to prepare the way of the Lord, to point the people of his time to recognize Jesus Christ, and that he did faithfully. We are going to consider the message under three subheadings. Point number one, we consider the imperative of evangelism and the identity of Christ. The imperative of evangelism and the identity of Christ. Point number two, we look at inspiring testimony by Christ concerning John the Baptist. Point number three, we consider inescapable reproach and warning against unbelief. Point number one, the imperative of evangelism and the identity of Christ. In Matthew chapter 11, reading from verse 1, and it came to pass when Jesus had made an end of commanding his 12 disciples, he departed. Let's take note of the word commanding. He didn't have to beg them. He didn't have to even persuade them. He commanded them to go out and do the work for which they were called. He didn't have to plead with them. He reminded them that evangelism is not optional for every one of us as believers. And we need to keep that in mind. Sharing the gospel is not something that we do voluntarily. It is something that we just have to do it no matter what is confronting us in life, wherever we are, or whatever is going on around us. I pray that the Lord will give us the grace to be faithful in fulfilling this great ministry of sharing the gospel, which is every believer's ministry. And then in verse 2, now when John had heard in the prison the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples and said unto him, Art thou he that shall come, or do we look for another? Are you the one we've been expecting, or do we look for another? John was doing his work, preaching the word of God. He had declared, Behold, the Son of God, Jesus Christ, that taketh away the sin of the whole world. What then brought about this question? How come John that have been telling us, Behold, the Son of God, that takes away the sin of the whole world, is also the one sending his disciples to go and ask Jesus, Are you really the Messiah, or do we? Now let's take note of the word we. John was not just speaking for himself. And that's why he used the word we. At that particular time, the children of Israel have actually been expecting the Messiah. But due to their spiritual dullness and lack of study or knowledge of the scripture, when the Messiah came, they didn't recognize him. They didn't recognize him for some reasons. Reason number one, they were expecting a Messiah a political, powerful Messiah that will come and deliver them from the oppression of the Roman authorities. They couldn't reconcile that, their expectation, their wrong expectation, with the humble birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. They couldn't reconcile their wrong expectation with the humility of the life of our Lord Jesus Christ. They also couldn't recognize could not reconcile their wrong expectation with Jesus' focus on preaching the kingdom of God and not addressing their own social and political needs. And so they were not sure. Then I believe, or conceivably, John's disciples 
we are not left out of this wrong expectation that brought about feelings of disappointment. Let's not also forget that in the book of Matthew, chapter 4, verse 12, we read, Now, when Jesus had heard that John was cast into prison, he departed into Galilee. Matthew chapter 4, the mention of Jesus' arrest came up. But the details of why, sorry, of John's arrest, but the details of why John was arrested didn't come up until Matthew chapter 14. We don't know the duration between Matthew chapter 4 and Matthew chapter 14. John has been in prison and his life was under a threat. And we don't read anywhere between Matthew chapter 4 and Matthew chapter 14 where Jesus Christ did anything or said anything about how to get John out of prison. So John himself and his disciples were wondering, you are the Messiah. And look at all that you are doing. Miracles are being performed. People are being raised from the dead. And here, the forerunner is in prison and nothing is being done. So they sent to ask this question. John wanted his disciples also to hear directly from Jesus Christ and every other person that had this wrong expectation. And so the question was asked, are you the Messiah? Or do we, not only me as John, do we expect another? And eventually, Jesus gave the answer. But before we talk about the answer, let's think. A songwriter wrote and said, does Jesus care when my heart is pained too deeply for me? The answer is yes, he cares. At this point in John's life, he was at the lowest level of his life. And that reminds us of the need for us as believers to constantly renew our spirit, renew our mind with the word of God so that we can maintain a lively faith no matter what is happening to us. The songwriter also says, at a time like this, you need an anchor. May God give us an anchor at a time that we are passing temptations and trials so that we can maintain our faith in the Lord. And the Lord will do it for us in Jesus' name. In 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 12, we are told, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trials which is to try you as though some strange things happened unto you. Jesus, John wanted Jesus Christ to make a public declaration that he is the Messiah. Jesus was not going to do that. And the reason is, if he, he didn't need to do that, so that his Messiahship will not be revealed by flesh and blood. You know that later, he asked his disciples, who do men say that I am? And who do you, as my disciples, say that I am? And Peter made that de great declaration. You are Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Messiah. And he told Peter that flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you. Jesus didn't want flesh and blood to reveal the fact that he's the Messiah to his hearers. He wanted people to believe in him based on the conviction of the Holy Spirit. When Peter made that declaration that, yes, you are the Messiah, Peter did not say so because Jesus whispered to him or instructed him to say so. Peter said so because the evidence was overwhelming. Peter was convinced. Peter was sure that this is Jesus Christ, the Messiah. It is important for every one of us that apart from coming to church, you encounter the Lord, that the Spirit of God will do the work in your heart, do the work in your life, that you, on your own, will find out and believe wholeheartedly that Jesus Christ is the Messiah, and he is the only one that has the capacity to save, to deliver from sin, and hinder me from spending my time in hellfire, my eternity in hellfire. 
while it is good for preachers to preach, while it is good for people to talk to you, you need that conviction. And I pray the Lord will give you that conviction in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We look at point number two. Inspiring testimony by Christ concerning John. In our text, Matthew chapter 11, reading from verse 7, and as they, those the disciples of John, as they departed, Jesus began to say unto the multitude concerning John, what went he out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaking with the wind. He was telling them, John is in the wilderness preaching the gospel. You went there. You saw him. You listened to him. You came back unconverted. So what did you really go there to see? A reed shaking by the wind? John wasn't a reed. He was very formidable, very steadfast, not easily shaken by any circumstances. And you saw him, listened to him, and still came back unconverted. Then in verse 8, but what, what went he out for to see? A man clothed in sail, in soft payment. Behold, they that wear soft clothing, that wear soft clothing, are in king's houses. Did you, went, did you go out to see a man well dressed? If that is what you are looking for, you should have gone to the king's court, the king's palace, to see them that dress well. In verse 9. But what, what, what went you out for to see a prophet? Yea, I say unto you, and more than a prophet. For this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare the way, thy way before thee. Then in verse 11 he says, Behold, I say unto you, among them that are born of women, there had not risen a greater than John the Baptist, Notwithstanding, he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. He that is least in the kingdom of God, in the kingdom of heaven, is greater than John. What does that mean? John was great. However, John lived and died before the completion of the work Jesus Christ did on the cross of Calvary. As great as he was, he falls under the prophets that existed, that served under the old covenant. And Jesus is saying that in the new covenant era, the least person in the gospel era stands on a higher ground based on what Jesus Christ did on the cross than the greatest person in, under the law. Say it another way. The, bright, the darkest day is brighter, lighter than the brightest night. You cannot compare the two. And he encouraged them. He says, look at you. If you get born again now, you are better status-wise, spiritually speaking, than those people that lived under the law. I pray that the Lord will minister to us. Based on what John said, rating the least in the kingdom of heaven above John the Baptist, what should be our attitude towards the gospel? Any answer? How should we readily, joyfully, happily embrace the gospel? The Lord has made it clear to us that we need to embrace the gospel because of how important it is to us. And then he goes on to say, in verse 12, after those days of John, and from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violence take it by force. The kingdom of God can never suffer anything. The violence referred to here is a holy violence. John preached. Jesus preached. 
and people who were never expected to accept the gospel, they accepted the gospel, and with the eagerness and with intensity, they were rushing into the kingdom of heaven. While the Jews, who ordinarily normally think the kingdom belonged to them, were there doubting and languishing in unbelief. And Jesus said that the people that are rushing into the kingdom are like the armies that are invading a city and they are getting saved. And some of you are still here, not saved. May God have mercy on us. May God have mercy on his people. You are not a Christian because of how long you have been in the church. You are not a Christian because of whether you were born in the church. You are only a Christian when and if you accept the salvation message and give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ and become saved. That is what makes you a Christian. That's what makes you a child of God. Point number three, inescapable reproach and warning against unbelief. This time around, we look at the book of Luke. Luke chapter 7, and we'll start reading from verse 16. In Luke chapter 7, reading from verse 16. And there came fear on all, and they glorified God, saying that a great prophet is risen up among us, and that God has visited his people. Verse 17. And this rumor of him went forth throughout all Judea and throughout all the region round about. And the disciples of John showed him of all these things. And John calling unto him and said, Say to Jesus, Art thou he that should come, or look we for another? But this is the answer of Jesus in verse 22. He said, Then Jesus answering, said, Unto them, Go your way and tell John what things you have seen and heard, how that the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, to the poor the gospel is preached, and blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. Like I said earlier, Jesus didn't want to answer the question the way John wanted it. John wanted a public declaration that will align with what he had said about Jesus Christ. But Jesus wanted people to get converted by the conviction of the Holy Spirit. And let's remember, after praising John, commending John, he turned to these people that are so unbelieving. The hard-hearted people, they went to the wilderness. They listened to John. Now, they didn't hear the voice crying in the wilderness. They didn't listen to the voice pleading with them in the city. And God, Jesus said unto them, You are like children that they play for you, you will not dance. They mourn to you, you will not show any kind of sympathy. You are not cooperating. You are neither here nor there. And in John chapter 3 verse 36, there the Bible tells us, he that believeth on the Son had everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. These people, they thought that they were wise. And as you continue reading our text, you discover that he told them that wisdom will be justified by his children. Meaning the wisdom you think you have that is keeping you away from accepting the message from God, that wisdom will be justified at the end of the journey, at the end of time, by the fruit it produces for you and on you. Wisdom is justified by his children. They criticize John for not drinking and eating with other people. But when Jesus came and was eating and drinking with people, they also criticized him for doing that. Those who don't want to get saved will always find excuse to reject both the message and the messenger. But for us that are in here in this church this morning, you've been attending programs, you've been hearing messages. Are you like these people that neither we believe John or believe Jesus 
and they think they are wise, wisdom is justified by his children. What you think is wisdom today will be justified at the end of the time by what it will bring you away. So, in John chapter 3, verse 36, we want to round up from there. He said, He that believeth on the Son had everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall see life, shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. The question is, why should you allow the wrath of God to abide on you? Let him have, let him that have ears to hear, hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Let's bow down our heads to pray. Tell the Lord to minister to you, speak to you, and help you to accept the message, be genuinely converted before it is too late. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Heavenly Father, thank you for the teaching of this morning. We pray that your spirit will continue to minister to us, and the grace to do the right thing, to respond appropriately, we shall all respond in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, for the answer. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. We have had this morning an elaborate teaching on the, the testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ concerning John the Baptist. The teaching has been very elaborate, but uh, if there are still any questions, uh, areas we need to uh, give more illumination, give more understanding, you are very free to come up and um, ask your question. So if you have any question to ask, can you please signify by raising your hand? Do you have any question? If I am not seeing you, please uh, just step to the front from wherever you are so that we can attend to the question. Okay, that our brother in blue quickly. In, in Matthew chapter 11, verse 11, he says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, among them that are born of women, there has not arisen a greater than John the Baptist, notwithstanding he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. From uh, this verse, our Sadhguru scripture teacher made a statement that the least person in the gospel era stands higher than John the Baptist. When I looked at this verse, I'm confused, but uh, I, I'll be grateful if... Uh, there is a scriptural backing to really explicitly uh, elucidate this verse to make me understand why such statement is tenable. Then secondly, some people also say that uh, uh, John the Baptist, uh, when you want to preach to some people, they will say, don't uh, talk to leaders or people in authority. That John the Baptist told uh, uh, Herod uh, that why did he take his brother's wife? that that was the reason why he was incarcerated. And as such, some, as an, a, a preacher, you should be cautious while uh, preaching to leaders. So, uh, uh, are you saying that uh, John the Baptist uh, made a mistake by preaching, to, uh, John the, uh, uh, by preaching to the king? Or, at the same time, why didn't Jesus Christ come to the rescue of John the Baptist? Thank you very much. Um, you just say, maybe we'll take one more before we, um, any sister there so that we can do a balancing. Any sister wanted to ask a question? Okay, our brother in the front here. Good morning, sir. Sir, the, I want to ask this simple uh, a question because of uh, something I've experienced. Uh, I am the uh, a cover from the other side but what happened is that I have a lot of so many convert and so many of them whatever I pray with them for God answer it and some of them happen to say they believe in Christ uh, to where the, the answer of the prayer and what God 
do for them, to weigh my prayer for them. But the problem is that they want to serve him in the secret that they should, it should be only in secret. And I, I keep on telling them it cannot be possible. The reason you come to God is because of the salvation of your soul first. It's not just because material is in this world. And uh, even just last week, my sister, all the way from Niger Republic, she have a problem. And then I just pray with her. And I say, this time around, it's time for you to surrender your life to Christ. And they say, Please no. just go to your question so that we can So my mind. question is that there are so many people that believe in Christ, but because of one thing or the other that people will say, they find it difficult to come out boldly and serve God so that at the end of the day, they will make it. My question is, how do those people end up? Okay, thank, thank you very you, much. Let's uh, look at um, the question of our brother from Matthew chapter 11. In verse um, 11. Verily, 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 I say unto you, among them that are born of women, there hath not risen a greater than John the Baptist, notwithstanding, he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Our brother wants to know the justification behind the statement of our Lord Jesus Christ. We must understand that the goal of the Lord Jesus Christ is to ensure that everybody gets to heaven. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 1, verse 21, Matthew chapter 1, verse 21, it says, And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sin. Now the Lord Jesus Christ elucidated, explained why he came. He has uh, elogized, he has uh, given credence to the ministry of John the Baptist. And he has uh, made everybody to know that John the Baptist has uh, stood so that high, higher than all the prophets. Why? Because it was the forerunner of the Lord Jesus Christ. Not only did he speak about Jesus Christ coming, God gave him the privilege of seeing Jesus Christ. That is what we saw in John chapter 1, verse um, 29. God gave him that privilege. He saw Jesus Christ, and then he didn't just uh, preach Jesus that was to come, but Jesus Christ that actually came and he saw, and he was able to point Jesus to other people. In, verse, in John chapter 1, verse 29, and the next day, John seeth Jesus coming unto him, and said, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Now, the Lord Jesus Christ gave credence to the ministry of uh, John the Baptist. And he made everybody to know that this man being a forerunner, being the person who heralded, the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ was given the privilege to see him face to face. That made him, uh, that made his ministry greater than others. Not only did he teach Jesus, I mean, did he teach the people about Jesus in abstract and make people to believe, but God gave him the privilege of seeing Jesus and pointing Jesus to the people. God also gave him the privilege of enlightening men. So this is a great privilege God gave to him. And considering his lifestyle, considering his simplicity, considering his um, audacity in confronting the power that be, the power, the, uh, just to make sure that the gospel is preached, Without fear, without fear, 
without favor. The Bible, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ said, is higher than every other prophet. But then, he now said that the least in the kingdom, even though he's so high, the least in the kingdom is higher than him. Now, how do we mean? Jesus Christ saw John the Baptist here on earth, and he was ministering. Jesus Christ wants us to understand that the greatest thing we should seek is the kingdom of God. What shall he profit a man? If he gain the whole world and he loses his own soul, what shall he profit a man that um, he had the gospel, but then eventually he falls by the wayside? Jesus, I mean, John the Baptist was here on earth ministering. The Lord Jesus Christ said, those who are born by the grace of God, those by the grace of God are brought into the kingdom and they continue in the gospel and they endure to the end and eventually get to the kingdom of God. They are far, far better than not just being in this world here. He's talking about uh, Christian triumphant believers, not just the militant believers. If somebody, somebody can be very militant, somebody can be very, um, uh, um, be, can be very courageous, but the end justify the means. Getting to heaven should be our goal. Getting to heaven should be our desire. We must get to heaven. When we get to heaven, then we have won all. That is why he said, comparatively, John is here. That is not to say that he's doubting that um, John will not make it to heaven. But he wanted everyone to know that no matter what you do here or not, if you, are, if you cannot get to heaven, then you have not actually achieved anything. Because... The goal of the Lord Jesus Christ is to take men from this world and take him to heaven. The militant believer must be part of the triumphant church. While we are here on earth, we are militant. We are working for the Lord. Just like we saw uh, Jesus Christ uh, drew a, a cue from the life of John the Baptist. He commended him for his... Uh, tenacity. He commended him for his fervency. He commended him for the, I mean, the way he handled the work of God without let or without any fear. But then he now said, you that are hearing me, you must understand that getting to heaven is very, very important. In the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 4, Let's quickly look at um, um, verse 20. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 20. 1 Corinthians 4, verse 20. It says, For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. The power that can hold you to get to heaven is the power that the Lord Jesus Christ is giving to us. The power, the grace that will keep you in this world and take you to heaven is the power that will actually make us accepted in the beloved. Getting to heaven should be our goal. The Bible says the kingdom of heaven is not meat and drink, but it is righteousness. It is holiness. It is purity. Our goal should not just that you not just be that I'm able to heal the sick, I'm able to deliver the oppressed. Our goal should be that we endure till the end and we get to heaven. The kingdom of heaven is it should be major in our life. If anybody falls by the wayside, he doesn't get to, to the kingdom of heaven, all this work will. Uh, be, I mean, will, uh, um, will, be, um, will just be cancelled. All this work 
will not be remembered. It is when we get to heaven that we are, uh, that we can say that we have achieved, that we can say all the effort of, our, of, of um, all, our, all our pastors, our Father in the Lord, has been brought to fruition. So getting to heaven should be our goal. That is the light Jesus Christ is bringing to us. That heaven is a great, is a, is a, it should be a great desire. And I pray none of us will miss heaven in Jesus' name. Then our, our brother has asked about um, what do we do? Those who are, um, some are um, uh, getting miracles. They are, he's, I mean, he's talking, I mean, he's preaching to them. But many of them are still um, doubting. Jesus Christ, doubt, I mean, addressed that even in the text we had today. He made us to understand that we must not doubt the word of God. What was the undoing of um, Sodom and Gomorrah and all these places? He, he talked about um, all these, I mean, verse um, 21. Woe unto thee, Chorazim, woe unto thee, Belshazzar, Bethsaida. For if the mighty work which has been done in you has been done in Tyre and Sidon, they will have repented long ago in sackcloth. It is not just enough for us to receive miracles, for us to receive um, the blessing of God. It is, the, our major goal is all this blessing should make us to accept Jesus Christ, believe in him, trust in him. And when we do this, the blessing of God will be upon our lives in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We have, um, um, we, we have learned this morning, but we have seen in the life of um, our Lord Jesus Christ that he had time for his disciples and he had time for the congregation. That is what we saw in uh, Matthew chapter 11, verse 1. And it came to pass when Jesus has made an end of commanding his 12 disciples, he departed then to teach and preach in their city. What a great uh, ministry that resembled that of Christ that we have in our Father in the Lord here. When he goes to any place, there will be time for the ministers. There should be meat for the ministers. There should be time to develop the people of God. All that we are hearing today, that the life of John the Baptist was um, highly commended. And Jesus Christ wants us to look at his consistency, his commitment, his um, loyalty, his faithfulness, his ruggedness. And that is why in the morning at this uh, global crusade, we have ministers' conference. Just like what Jesus Christ did here. He had time for the disciples. If you are a minister and you are missing this program, you are not uh, doing yourself any good. Because that is the ministry of Jesus. They are most, they, those who are at the forefront must be developed, must be kept. So Jesus Christ spoke to the disciples. And then he now came to the congregation. He now spoke to the multitude. I pray that God will continue to bless this ministry. And we will continue to see the power of God be manifested in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And all of us should know that there is nothing we're doing here that does not follow the pattern of the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. Believers, we must know that whether we are commended or not, whether we are, um, uh, whether anybody uh, speak well of us, let us know what we're doing. Getting to heaven is of great importance to us. I pray no, none of us will miss heaven in Jesus' name. I say none of us will miss heaven in Jesus' name. I will round up from, uh, by reading from verse, um, um, uh, Revelation chapter 14. Revelation chapter 14 in verse um, 13. He said, And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, Blessed are the dead, we die in the Lord. From henceforth, yea, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. What are you doing in the kingdom of God? Are you laboring 
for the salvation of souls. Don't um, think that God does not remember what you are doing. The Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 6, verse 13, it said, God is not unrighteous to forget our labor. John the Baptist might not have known that Jesus was taking record of what he was doing. And he didn't commend him what he was there. He commended him. He didn't want him to, uh, uh, to, to, I mean, to, to feel that, well, this is just like flatter, I mean, they're flattering him. He commended him when he was not there. All what we're doing, they are going down in record. Are you handling the house fellowship? Are you handling the assignment God has given to you? If you are a side the leader, do you prepare? The Bible says, everyone shall be rewarded. And finally, Revelation chapter 22, in verse 12. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according as his work shall be. What shall you, what is the nature of your work? Are you doing it complacently? Are you doing it fervently? Are you doing it dedicatedly? Are you doing it committedly? Are you doing it as unto the law? The Bible says, let us not be weary in well-doing. Galatians chapter 6 verse 9. Let us not be weary in well-doing. Because in due season, if we faint not, we shall live. Let's rise up and talk to God this morning. And tell the Lord, help me to be a compliment to your work. John the Baptist did it without waiting for commendation.
we rise on our feet as we take our congressional song from our gospel hymn and song number 49. Gospel hymns and song number 49. Why passing through this world of sin and others your life shall view? Be clean and pure without within. Let others see Jesus in you. Your lives are book before their eyes. They are reading it through and through. Say, does it point them to the sky? Do others see Jesus in you? What joy to be at the set of sun in mansions beyond the blue to find some soul that you have won. Let others see Jesus in you. Then live for Christ both day and night. Be faithful, be brave and true, and lead the lost to life and light. Let others see Jesus in you. Let others see Jesus in you. Let others see Jesus in you. Keep telling the story. Be faithful and true. Let others see Jesus in you. <laughs>
number 179. 179. I'm pressing on the upward way. New eyes I'm gaining every day. Still praying as I onward burn. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. My heart has no desire to stay. Where doubts arise and fears dismay. Though some may dwell where this abound, my constant aim is higher ground. Beyond the mist, I fain will rise to rest beneath unclouded skies. Above earth's tumult, peace is found by those who dwell on higher ground. I long to scale the utmost eyes, door of the way, and add the fight my song. Why climbing shall resound, Lord, lead me unto higher ground. Lord, lead me up the mountainside. I dare not climb without my guide. Can ever gain, I gaze around with grateful heart from higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's stable land. We are love and joy and light abound. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground.
Christ on our feet as we want with grateful heart go to the Lord to give him thanks. We have heard the word, the revelation of our privileged position in Christ. As the least in the kingdom greater than John, let's open our mouth, let's thank the Lord for the great riches of Christ upon the church, upon you as a child in the kingdom. Let's worship the Lord, let's thank the Lord for today. Let's thank the Lord for all the glorious things that we have observed, we've heard, even during the course of the meeting, even this morning. Open your mouth and thank the Lord. Thank the Lord for the service that is on now. Thank the Lord for your being here. Thank the Lord for all that the Lord has done for the church. Thank the Lord even for the word of God and the light, the illumination in the church. In Jesus' name we pray. The Bible says, upon the first day of the week, let everyone bring as the Lord has prospered him. With this time now, we want to give our tithes, we want to give our offerings. And so whatsoever you have come with, can you please bring it out, raise it as we pray together. Our Father, we thank you for this very wonderful day. With grateful heart, we appear before you. And with grateful heart, here on earth, we are lifting up this offering. We pray you accept in our, from our hand. And as we give, we pray this offering will be a blessing, both to the giver and the church, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because we know you've answered. In Jesus' name, we pray. Just open your eyes for a while and drop your offering while we continue in the mode of prayer. We want to pray, even at this time, for our nation. Nigeria is for Christ, and we are going to pray the Lord will take control of the affair of our land. That in this country of our, of our own, all the problems, challenges we are facing, the Lord will help us to summon them. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer. Tell the Lord that all the problems, economic problems, social problems, political issues, and whatever, that the Lord will help us to surmount even the problem. Remember, God is still in heaven and is the governor among the nation. Let's pray that the Lord will guide our ruler. God will control them. And that the Lord will help his people in position of authority in our land to follow the path of righteousness, fear of God, compassion. And the Lord will also strengthen them to be able to do right. Open your mouth and pray. In Jesus' name, we pray. Prayer now for our Father and the Lord, our General Superintendent. You can see even right here before now, we have been blessed already, and that's just a, a, a teaser, a sampler. We are going to pray that the Lord who have been using this man of God, God will continue to use him. God's hand will continue to be upon him. Like it happened unto Moses, the Bible says, his eyes were not dim. His natural force did not obey. The Lord will, will strengthen our general superintendent. Open your mouth and pray that as he continue in the service of the Lord, in ministry to millions all over the world, the hand of the Lord will continue to be upon him. In Jesus' name, we pray. In Psalm 68 and in verse 31, Psalm 68, verse 31, the Bible says, Princes, shall come out of Egypt, and Ethiopia shall soon stretch out its hand unto the Lord. This prophecy is being fulfilled with the global crusade. You know, during global crusade, we see global audience in India, in Asia, Pakistan. That is princes coming even out of Egypt. And Ethiopia stretching its hand to the Lord. We are going to pray. The Lord will continue to use him to bless millions all over the world. And all those princes that the Lord has prepared in Egypt, in Ethiopia, Gentile world, America, in Asia, in Latin America, in our global crusade that the Lord is using for, those people will begin to come out and declare for the Lord. Open your mouth and pray. Princes shall come out of Egypt. Ethiopia, representing the Gentile world, shall soon stretch out their hand. We did global crusade, pray the outreach. We bring many people. You can see, we hear 
all those people singing, beam, when they are beamed live to us, it will continue. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's pray for our mother in the Lord, the mother in Israel, that the Lord will continue to strengthen him. It's a common saying that behind a successful man, there is a woman. And we thank God for our mother. We are going to pray the hand of the Lord will continue to be upon our life too. And the entire family. Can you open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer? In Jesus' name we pray. Prayer for the church. We are going to pray. This church, our path will become brighter. Our step will become clearer. And the membership, the law will strengthen. The workforce, the leaders, missionary. Pray for them and tell the law for the rest of the year. Glory upon the church. Glory upon everyone. Open your mouth and pray. Ask the Lord to let his hand be upon them all in the church. In Jesus' name we pray. Lastly, we need to pray. The Bible says, is it nothing to you? As we see this youth that are fainting, we want to pray for the youth in the church, youth in our nation, and other places that are roaming the streets. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, we thank you, and we pray as you continue, you continue with us. In Jesus' name, we pray. You may be seated. Thank you very much. We want to welcome all our visitors, newcomers, and also Global Crusade converts who are coming to Deeper Life Bible Church headquarters for the very first time today. Our general superintendent, is here with us by the grace of God. And perhaps you have listened or seen him on social media, television, or heard him on radio. Here you are this morning, very live, and also in physical contact with him. And as the Lord has used him to bless millions, and he's still using him to bless millions all over the world, this morning God will use him to bless you. He will want me to welcome you it's happy that you are here, and by the grace of God, we want to recognize you wherever you are seated so that we can give you a special welcome. And so if you are here today, maybe you got converted during the Global Crusade, or you were invited here this morning for the first time, or you are just a newcomer passing by and you come around, can you please indicate wherever you are seated? We want to see you. Thank you very much. Can you rise on your feet, please? We want to see you. Thank you. God bless you. Church, what do you tell them? What do you tell them? So right where you are there, our ushers are very close to you. They will give you a slip. Please complete it, fill it properly, and then you hand it over to them. And after the service, we will want you to please come over to the front here, in, the, in front of the pulpit here. We would like to see you and also give you more information about the church. And let me tell you, you are not just ordinary visitor or just a newcomer. You are a friend of the church and you're also a friend of Jesus. You are our friend we are meeting for the first time. And by the grace of God, henceforth, you will keep on coming, you invite your neighbors, and the Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. A greater amen.